orbits. I mean, when you really think about them, they're kind of crazy. I mean, you have this huge mass in space, and it's flying through space at some ridiculous speed, but for some reason it keeps circling a bigger mass, and the only thing that's working on the smaller mass is gravity from the bigger mass pulling it inwards. So how come it doesn't slam into the bigger mass? It's weird. But as weird as it is, it does work. I mean, we have things orbiting all over the universe, right? So there's, it's got to make sense. Now, to begin to understand this, we need to start with something fundamental, and that is the independence of vertical versus horizontal motion and forces. So let me show you some examples. Here, I'm going to drop a ball, lightly throw a ball, and then throw the ball even further. No matter how far I throw it out, it's always going to hit the ground after the same amount of time has passed. What it's doing horizontally doesn't matter because gravity is still going to accelerate it downwards, vertically, at the same rate. Let's imagine throwing a ball in deep space. We're nowhere near any planets or stars, so gravitational force is negligible. Once the ball is released, there would be no force acting on the ball at all. And since there's no forces on the ball, it would remain at the horizontal velocity it was at when it left your hand. Newton's first law tells us that the ball will continue to do this until something forces it to stop. Until that happens, it moves at a constant velocity. Now imagine it was thrown near Earth where there is gravity. We'll ignore air resistance, so horizontally it would do the same thing as before and keep moving at the same velocity since nothing is stopping it. The difference now is that gravity is pulling it down at the same time, so while it moves forward, it's also moving down towards the planet. This is why the ball is not able to keep going. It runs into the ground. If there was no ground, it would keep moving forward, just like the one in deep space did. Now, we naturally want to say that gravity is pulling things down, because that's really all we've ever known. We've never left the planet unless you're an astronaut or something. Gravity is actually pulling things inwards towards the center of the planet, and that's an important thing to wrap your head around as we figure out orbits. What you think is down on Earth is very different than what somebody else might think down is on Earth. But one thing you can both agree upon is that gravity is pulling you inwards towards the center of Earth. So we know that no matter what we do, gravity is going to be pulling things towards the planet. So how do we get an orbit from this? So when we throw things within Earth's gravity, regardless of how fast we throw them horizontally, they will land at the same time. But imagine someone could throw a ball really fast, like so fast that the ball doesn't have a chance to hit the ground. Vertically, it would still be accelerating towards the ground, but because it is moving horizontally so fast, it wouldn't have a chance to hit the ground since Earth keeps curving downwards. It would continuously fall around the Earth, trying to hit the ground, but never reaching it in time. Newton's thought experiment involving a cannonball is the same idea. For each position of the cannonball, gravity is pulling the cannonball down, which is really just inwards towards the Earth's center. If nothing stops the cannonball from moving horizontally, it will continue to fall around the Earth. And that is basically what an orbit is. You are just falling around the thing that you are orbiting. Now you might be thinking, well, it's moving fast now, but what happens when it slows down? But remember, it has inertia. In order to accelerate mass to slow it down, you would need a force. And there are no horizontal forces acting on this thing moving through space, and so there's nothing to slow it down. It's going to keep moving fast enough to continuously fall around the thing it's orbiting. If you ever happen to be in orbit, like say at the International Space Station or some other space station that we come up with, you will feel like you are constantly falling because you are constantly falling, which is probably a really weird sensation. Imagine sitting where you are right now while simultaneously feeling like you're on a roller coaster. Yeah, that would be a good time for me. Anyway, I hope this helped. If you have any further questions, please let me know. Have a good one.